If not for the empty tracks, you might confuse the Egg Harbor City train station for a bus stop. Since September, the bus has been the only option for Ruth Benvenuto. I need the train to go to the doctors in Atlantic City to do my food shopping. Ruth's assemblymen Vince Mazio and John Armato have patiently waited for New Jersey Transit to finish federally required safety upgrades on engines and tracks. The upgrades include installing technology to prevent overspeed derailments, like the one we saw in Philadelphia with Amtrak 188. New Jersey Transit told South Jersey commuters it didn't have enough equipment to run the Atlantic City line while it made the safety enhancements here and across its system. Every other rail system is running in the state except this one. I got a real issue with that. Our investigation discovered New Jersey Transit's problem with safety cascaded. Federal inspections conducted from 2016 through mid-2018 show problems that had to be corrected. Fixing them delayed other upgrades. Closing the Atlantic City line is a way to catch up. Safety was front and center after the railroad's 2016 accident at the Hoboken terminal. The crash killed a woman waiting for the train and injured more than 100 passengers. In that case, investigators found the train's event recorder stopped working months before the accident. Over the next 18 months, inspectors documented more than 150 safety hazards across the railroad, including air brake leakage, field supervisors not properly trained, and unattended locomotives found in the run position. Inspectors also document what they describe as engineers' bad behavior. The train isn't secure and, quote, stretched out in the sleeping position with his personal cell is the engineer. That, that basically says that the safety culture is not where it should be. We shared the reports with railroad safety expert Alan Zaremski. There needs to be a greater focus on New Jersey Transit's parts, on looking at these items and making sure that the ones that have the potential for contributing to a safety problem are addressed and corrected on an ongoing basis. Inspectors logged fewer hazards in 2018 than in 2017, but Zaremski didn't know if that was because there were fewer problems or fewer inspections. The reduced number that we see in 2018 may be the fact that New Jersey Transit has decided that they wanted to put a priority on safety, that they realize that there is a safety culture issue. We wanted to ask if something changed, but New Jersey Transit repeatedly refused to schedule interviews with us to discuss safety concerns. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be able to have that interview. Thank you, Mitch Blocker. Instead, we had to schedule an interview with their boss, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. How concerned right now are you about the safety culture in New Jersey Transit? Well, listen, the safety and security of all 9 million residents of the state of New Jersey is my number one responsibility, so I'm obviously concerned. But I believe there has been a sea change. A year into Governor Murphy's administration, the railroad is about to graduate six classes of new engineers. That's the most in nearly a decade. Is there any hope that we might see the Atlantic City line open anytime soon? 100% certainty. When? Um, when? I don't know when. The governor told us a management overhaul is reinvigorating attention to detail and safety, but that doesn't seem to include transparency. The only time the railroad's executive director talked safety culture with us was during a news conference organized by the governor. The workforce that was involved was, was stretched thinner than it should have been, so allowed for uh, some uh, sloppy uh, uh, things that came up in the FRA reports. Have those things changed now? The, the culture has changed. What hasn't changed are South Jersey's empty tracks. I think South Jersey has definitely been forgotten by New Jersey Transit. For the investigators, I'm Mitch Blocker, NBC 10 News.